Hello folks, welcome back to the Key Productive YouTube channel. Today's video is starting this week all about Woven. Now, I have been using Woven for about three months now. I actually wanted to show you a feature that inside of it I particularly enjoy using and that might be useful if you're an existing Woven user or you may be looking at it. I will be covering more calendar apps. I'm actually looking to cover clockwise soon again. Um, they've got a lot of analytic abilities that are quite interesting. Uh, I'm looking to cover Woven a bit more, so if you're new to the channel, do subscribe. So, as you can see up here, um, as you can imagine on the plus button, if you hover over it, you get a, a multitude of options. We'll be demonstrating this one-time scheduling link, and this basically allows you to suggest times for a single meeting. Uh, but you can do templating, which I am looking to set up in full. Uh, allowing you to essentially just do the same meeting over again in terms of a structured, um, say, for example, you do podcasts or you do routine one-to-one uh, -one meetings with your um, employees, something like that. You've also got two others, which is like group poll, which is similar to Doodle, and public scheduling, which is more of a, like a permanent uh, embed base for you when you're looking to do multiple uh, sessions. So here we go, one-time scheduling link. And what I find quite cool is, for example, when you start a blank one, uh, obviously you can start rolling on it. Um, it gives you and offers you up templates, but you can, for example, say if I'm like, I type in bowl, um, it does bring up like bowling, which I do on a like sort of regular sort of two monthly basis, say with Edmund and Robin, but that comes from your past events. So for example, what it would do is you click on it, it will take the duration that you've had before uh, with those events, uh, which is quite cool, so two hours, 15 minutes, roughly. Um, and also, it will just start offering up those times automatically. So it basically sort of plots them out, um, and it tends to understand quite well that I don't, um, you know, like the work days, so you can actually change this if you want to and actually sort of break down, for example, the available times and duration you're available for. But if I just wanted to go ahead and create that link, I could send that over. And, and I'll show you near the end what that looks like. Um, but that's quite cool. I like the past events feature because I can just sort of create one from uh, one that I've done before. So if I did just Bob and Francesco um, and I pressed uh, new scheduling link. So what's really cool is first off, what I tend to do is choose the time period. So I've got 30 minutes here, say. Um, that could be a good uh, long enough time for me and Bob to meet. And what's cool is you get two options, offer all available times, which you can see it's sort of like uh, thrown every available time within the work days on the sort of calendar here. And you can um, go about like tapping them and actually, um, you know, interacting with what those parameters meet. But you can also choose the specific times in which what I do. But I'll, I'm just going to show you for the sake of this what the available times look like. So in this case, once I'm on available times, I can narrow this down or make this longer. So if I went to 6 p.m., you can see more times become available. But I can also in change the duration if I wanted to. So 15 minutes becomes a lot smaller, but more available times. If I did the same with 45 minutes, you'd see that stretch out a bit further. So you can also have no sooner than, um, which is quite cool because if, for example, you know you're like back from holiday, you can go one week from now. So all of the available times go away. But if I did it, say, from two hours from now, then only times from two hours will pop up, which I, I quite like because let's say you're like, okay, I don't want them to meet me in the next half an hour because I'm like, that'd be a bit too, a little bit too little prep time. Then you can do that. You can also do no later than uh, the next two days. So, for example, the ones that are past two days just disappear which is handy, so you can set yourself some really tight parameters. You can have no limits on them too. And what I quite like about this is buffer time as well. So for example, if I said, okay, like I don't want it to encroach on me and Dan playing badminton, then I could say half an hour distance. And you can see that anything that was half an hour around a specific event, it moves it away from, which is quite nice, so that it doesn't give you that sort of push of your time and, and sort of rush to get back. And you can also do two hours, so you can see that it moves anything away from two hours. Uh, and let's say I went to the next one, you can see that it's, that it's pretty cleanly distance from these ones here. So that you can also do, one thing I missed there is you can also change the time zone and also the days of the week. So for example, if you know you're not a Tuesday or Thursday person, you can narrow it down even further. 
So one thing I do, I just pretty much skip by that and I just go ahead and just sort of plot out the times. So I'll change this back to 30 minutes for this sake. And I normally sort of burrow them around times I'm already meeting, um, just so it saves me, I guess, a bit of batching time. Um, and for example, I can just sort of plot them out. Um, and as you can see, I've sort of got that going there. Now what I can do is connect up with the actual person. So they send this link automatically to their area uh, and they can choose the proposed times in whatever app they're using. Or I could set up conferencing, location, home, and they do have some good mapping abilities. I don't particularly use them. You can add a description, private notes, and even show as busy or free. You're probably wondering what does this look like? And uh, you get a link. Um, so for example, you can send it through email, edit the details, or even copy it here. So I'll show you what that looks like at the moment. But the one thing is they've got this sort of planning area here. So you can see that Bob and Francesco pops up here. So if Bob is like, say not replying to those uh, specific events, you can actually go in and manually select one for him, which is quite cool. That just allows you to schedule that automatically, which is nice. Um, so that's something you can do. Um, and also it's quite nice because you can edit any of the details from here, just inside. So for those who are on the other side of it, um, they get this sort of dash landing page and it's quite easy. All you have to do is say select um, one thing here and all they have to do is add their contact details and the email they will use for their calendar. So for example, um, that will connect with their Google Calendar or Apple Calendar because it tends to pull out of whatever's inside of your emails. So that's quite handy in terms of being able to scheduling stuff and that will then update on back end you can also get the sort of woven experience just on web and be able to sort of, I guess it's sort of a bit of a tempting thing for some people if they're like, oh, this is quite cool. But having a calendar sometimes is quite nice to actually see where that plots out. And if you're already using woven, that will automatically come up and sort of show you your dates around it, which makes it a little bit more appealing. So guys, that was how to use the scheduling link abilities. Um, hopefully it was useful and um, still pretty early in the morning. I uh, do apologize, but if you want to subscribe, it'd be great to have you. Uh, we'll be doing a few more types of videos like this very soon. So thank you very much for staying tuned today and I'll talk to you very soon. Cheers everyone, bye.